guys, welcome back to my channel if you're a returning subscriber and welcome if you are new here. Now, if you're somebody who is in a selling or lead generation position, then keep on watching. When it comes to sales, there are a multitude of different factors that come into play to determine whether you are successful at it or not. However, two of the most obvious or the most important from my experience are relevance and timing. Now, mass outreach simply does not work anymore. However, quality outreach does, which is why in this video, I want to go over buyer first selling, what that means, how you can apply it to LinkedIn and why it is going to set you apart from a lot of the other sellers moving into 2022. Now, if you follow my content, you will have already recognized this term. I've touched on it quite a few times. But to put it simply, if you haven't heard me speak about it before, buyer first selling is essentially where you are putting the buyer first through the customer experience journey whilst also meeting your commercial needs. So without further ado, let's get into the five principles that make up buyer first selling, what those principles are and how you can actually apply them to LinkedIn in the new year. Number one is learn then define. This is literally what it says. So before you are gonna reach out to someone, before you even think about initiating that conversation to guide a prospect down a sales path, who are you actually talking to? What problems are they facing? What do you need to know about the market? So go and do all of your prior research and then based on your findings, what you discover, you can then tailor the best approach and the best solution to fit this particular prospect. Now, obviously if you had to do that for every single prospect, it would take a really long time. So when I say do the research, do it from like a market slash industry level. And then we're also gonna go into how you can understand the particular prospect that you're reaching out to, to tailor and personalize your approach as well. So that is number one. Number two is share readily. I am going to repeat four words. The act of reciprocity give before you shall receive. A lot of sellers, myself in the past included, have this stigma or this kind of like idea that if we give too much away, then the prospect is never gonna purchase. Cause it's like, if we give everything away, then why would they buy? Cause there's nothing left to kind of obtain in terms of gated value. I'm not saying give away 100% of your service or your product, that's not what I'm saying. However, I am saying that it's okay to give and solve a part of the problem. People can tell when you're being genuine and when you truly actually want to help them, they can feel that. And with competition being so high, there's so many sellers and there's so many buyers, you need to make sure that you can set yourself apart from everyone else. So showing that you care and developing that human connection is really gonna be key to succeeding at sales going into the new year. Now, what can you give? So a lot of people ask me this question, in terms of sharing, what can I give away? Because everybody has this new webinar, everybody has the best case study, everybody has a white paper or a PDF that they can share. This can still be relevant. These things can still work. I'm not discounting them completely. However, is it specific to the situation? Is it actually gonna solve a part of the problem that your prospect has? How do you know? Ask them. So this is actually more about the timing. I used to, in my first message or in my email, just provide a resource, like a case study or a webinar. How do I know that's relevant? Like it might be relevant to the market in the industry, but it might not be relevant to the particular person that I'm reaching out to. So instead of sharing that value straight away, engage in the conversation before you do that and change the timing of your free value and how you share readily to after you have some of that input and some of that information from the prospect saying, this is actually something that I struggle with. And then you can say, oh my God, I've not like this. You already have these three resources on the back burner that you've got that you can then share and you can pick the most relevant one to that situation so it feels more personalized. Number three is solve, don't sell. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, position yourself as a trusted advisor instead of a sales rep. I'm gonna pull up some stats because some really interesting figures around this as well, but prospects, more and more are becoming more intelligent, more like modern buyers. They basically can shop around a lot. They're doing their research. They're no longer looking for a sales rep because sales reps, you've got thousands of them at your fingertips. However, a trusted advisor and someone that truly cares about you is harder to find. So if you make sure 
that you can work with the buyer, kind of like a collaboration where you are a team. It's not just you kind of shoving, shoving an offer down their throat, but you're actually saying, okay, can I help this prospect become problem aware and then solution curious through the messages that I'm sending and through the interactions and the multiple touch points that I'm having with them? Number four is deliver value. Now you might think this kind of goes a little bit into some of the earlier points that we mentioned into number two specifically, like share readily. However, what I want to kind of stress for this point is a lot of sales reps will put in so much effort and so much work and be the best friend of the prospect until the point of sale. And then as soon as the person buys, it's like the rep just falls off the face of the planet as if they were never even there. This is in kind of the follow-up. So having a meaningful, genuine relationship means that you are not only there for the initial or the start of the sales process and the customer's journey, you're actually staying with them. And when they do purchase, when they do convert, are you still following up with them? Like, how is it going for them? Is the, is the product or the solution still a good fit? Are they seeing the results that they wanted? Is there anything more that you can do to help? So following up with them and making sure that you maintain that relationship, not only is that good for customer retention, but it's also quite key for cross-selling. So if you have other products or services that this prospect might then be able to fit into in the future, if you've still got that relationship, it's a lot easier for you to bring that up, jump on a call with them, have another demo, instead of you disappearing, cutting contact, and then suddenly reappearing in their email or in their LinkedIn DMs and saying, hey, we have this amazing solution for you. Do you wanna check it out? Because they're gonna know that's purely driven probably by money, like monetary motivation from your side just to get extra permission. That brings me on to a really nice segue into the last principle, which is earn trust. Now you might have noticed this theme throughout this entire video. However, is there anything else that you can do outside of your list of deliverables or responsibilities within your job role to make this person feel like you genuinely care about their success? Can you introduce them to anybody else? Like in terms of like networking, other relationships that you can bring towards them where they start to kind of think, this person's doing this genuinely because they wanna see me win, not just because I'm another number on their pay slip or their commission slip at the end of the year or month or however your structure is set up. Now, I just wanna conclude as well, it's easy for me to say put the buyer at the center of the universe, but I know you also, it needs to make commercial sense for you. And that is the balance of buyer first selling. So around this, can you set up any systems or processes which enable you to be able to do your job and kind of hit your numbers and your targets whilst still maintaining these relationships. I would say having the correct kind of tech stack can help a lot with this and having a process or a system, like a loose guideline that you can follow, which you can personalize within, like within each step, you can kind of take that extra like two, three minutes just to make it more specific for the actual prospect that you're speaking with. I hope that you found all of this information relevant and useful. As always, please leave your requests in the comments. Like this video if you liked it and subscribe. Please just subscribe <laughs> and I'll see you in the next video. What do you think would be relevant? Sorry, someone just played music. On that, 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 wait, fuck.